I was a huge fan of the original. I'd already seen it three and four times. This, the movie came out just before, you know, home video or just as home video was taking off. And I did have a copy of it, but when it was in theaters, I saw it three and four times. So I came into this as a huge fan of the movie. And when uh, Michael Gross and Marsha Goodman, who was casting it, were giving notes to the room full of actors waiting to audition, they said, stay away from impressions. Whatever you do, no impressions, okay? And my background was stand-up comedy and as an impressionist. Uh, so I sat there going, you know, that's like telling me, you know, telling, telling me not to breathe, uh, you know, to not do an impression. And I could not see any other way to do Egon except for doing Ramus, except for doing as close to that voice as I could. So I thought, all right, I'm going to blow it, but I'm going to do the only thing I know how to do. At the time, I was just starting out in voiceover. This was only my second voiceover job. I'd done uh, uh, Inspector Gadget. I played the chief on that. But uh, I thought, well, I'll have fun. I'll just go in and have fun and dazzle them with my Harold Ramis impression and lose myself the job. And I went in and I did it, and nobody said anything about not doing the impression. And I think I tried one other take, maybe as a sort of a Woody Allen-ish poindextery kind of thing, which I just knew was wrong for the physicality of the character, because they'd actually drawn him taller and a little more buff than Ramus, you know. And I came outside, and well, actually, before I came home, came home, I came outside, and Arsenio was waiting to go in, and uh, and I sat with him and chatted for a minute. And someone had gone, and I hadn't noticed who. He came out, and it was Ernie Hudson, who had played Winston in the movie. So as Winston, as as Arsenio and I were talking, he'd come out, and they called for Arsenio, and he turned back and he looked at me and went, because he thought I'm going up against the guy who played in the movie. This has got to be some kind of formality. Lo and behold, Arsenio got the job. You know, and goodness knows why, but it was tremendous fun, and we were. Great friends from stand-up, so we had a wonderful run doing this on the show. So doing doing the impression uh, worked for me. I was the only guy they let slip through. I actually never had the chance to meet Harold Ramis. Uh, I was a fan of Second City from when I was a kid. You know, uh, we got Second City like fresh off the presses. I lived two miles from the studio where they filmed SCTV, so. And I had a friend whose dad was an anchorman at that particular TV studio. So I would, we would go a couple times and he'd sneak us in and let us watch them filming SCTV. A big fan, big fan of Ramis's, but I just kind of zeroed in just on that sort of glottal pullback that Harold had as the character and everything being very, very flat. And, um, you know, just, just worked off the Egon characterization because I know Harold's a little more loose than Egon, um, but yeah, it was just a, it was just a question of working off my what I imagine it would be like to be this sort of you know all this intelligence contained in this sort of deadpan, just outside the stream of life sort of fellow, who you know kind of I always thought within Egon, both Ramus's Egon and mine, there was this longing to kind of belong a little bit and uh, be one of the guys. So, you know, organically as an actor, that's kind of the note I played, that longing. And again, staying kind of close to the Ramus voice, even though I've been told, don't, no impressions, so. I've done many, many series. And a, there are different studios who like to work different ways. There's one studio where I've almost never recorded with the entire cast. Almost everything is picked up individually and line by line and a director reads with you. And, uh, and uh, the, this particular show though was very important that we have an ensemble feel to it. So we uh, always recorded together as a cast. If anybody couldn't make it, we all got good enough at doing each other's voices that once in a while we throw, there was one, for instance, one time Lorenzo couldn't make it. So, we all took turns playing Lorenzo, and I think Frank Welker did the best Lorenzo, but I came in second, and that was okay. And, um, you know, but we read it for timing, we, we played off of each other, and there was, a, I think there was a real chemistry amongst us uh, as a cast. 
And then the chemistry began to change because, as, as you know, no, there were cast changes that came about. Um, so I liked, I prefer to work as an ensemble. I think you get things off the other actors, little nuances, little things you can, you can then try to top them with. And, and uh, for me, that's my preferred way of working, and that's the way we worked on this show. It was not unusual for Frank and I, being the multiple voice guys, uh, to to play, you know, five characters each, six characters each. Frank was, uh, you know, Frank is the most versatile man in in all of animation, Frank Welker. If you look at look up his listing on the Internet Movie Database, I think he has something like a 16-page listing if you print it out in a small font. I mean, he's been on, he's been in everything, you know, since since the advent of TV animation, pretty much, from Scooby-Doo on forward to now in nearly every, uh, every show that's ever been. So for multiple voice guys like us, this show was terrific because we got to play Demon number one, two, and three, and, you know, and then you know, street guy and hot dog vendor and cabbie, because it had a very New York feel to it. So we did, a, we got to do a lot of different characters, a lot of flavor of the city kind of characters. Egon may take his proton pack down to the street and walk around, and a, a cabbie may say, hey, 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 how you doing there, Ghostbuster? You off the bus, not a ghost? And so he'd be carrying on down the street, and then all of a sudden there'd be a, you know, Kirk Douglas could come around the corner or somebody who sounds like, why don't you watch where you're going? You know, I would love to take celebrities and like cross-pollinate them and make them into, you know, so these these half Burt Lancaster, half Kirk Douglas. Why don't you watch where you're going? I don't know. Uh, that's, that's queasing art acting, I like to call it, or throw them into the transporter and have them meld into one. Um, so we would do, we would do, you know, that type of thing. There'd be a one-liner or a two-liner and, uh, you know, and then of course there were the demonic characters, so it could be, it's the Ghostbusters. No. Yeah, that's the old turn the tongue inside out. Make a vomitous sound. Since there was a lot of slime in the show, I figured all bodily fluids were welcome. Arsenio Hall was incredibly quick on his feet. Hippest guy, funniest, funniest between takes. You know, whenever we cut, he always had a, a hilarious comment um, and uh, really just a, a joy and a pleasure to work with. Just fun. I met Laura for the first time on the first day and I just thought, this girl's a firecracker. She was great. She embodied the, the gum-popping, uh, uh, smart alecky of Janine. And she was uh, she was terrific. I liked her immediately. We uh, we had a great time, and uh, for I think that was her first voiceover job, and for me it was my second. So we were both novices starting on this new uh, aspect of of our acting careers. And uh, later she was at, actually in an acting class of mine a bit later on, you know, pursuing the on camera thing as well. So uh, I liked her immediately. She she was uh, she was a good sport uh, with all of us guys in our bathroom.